Hello everyone. In the last video in the optical amplifier, we have discussed what is the operation of optical amplifiers, what are the types of optical amplifiers. So just we will uh, revise what we have studied in the previous class uh, before going to the next topics. Uh. So what is optical amplifiers? Uh? Optical amplifiers, uh, which is a which is the main element in the WDM system. So WDM system we have studied in the previous chapter, wavelength division multiplexing, because to increase the capacity of the optical fiber, many information can be transmitted in the single fiber by using multiplexer and demultiplexer. So uh, it increases the more capacity so that it can be used in optical networks in telecommunication industry. So, before passing through the single fiber, uh, it should be multiplied or sorry, it should be amplified. So, there are different types of amplifiers. Uh, it can be used as a inline amplifier, amplifier. So, this is the general applications of optical amplifiers. So, it can be used as an inline amplifier just to increase the capacity or it can be used to uh, amplify the signal within the uh, two transmitter and receiver section. So inline amplifier is usually used in the single mode fibers uh, just to boost the signal or just to increase the uh, signal strength within the uh, transmitter and receiver. And the pre-amplifier Pre-amplifier used just before the optical receiver. So before the photodetector, whatever the signal received through the optical fiber should be amplified, then it will be uh, fed to the photodetector. That is called as a pre-amplifier, just to increase the receiver sensitivity. And one more is the power amplifier. Power amplifier after the just Immediately after the optical transmitter, signal will be amplified and that will be transmitted through the optical fiber. So, there are three applications, three different applications of the optical amplifier. One, it can be used as an inline amplifier, second one, pre amplifier, third one, power amplifier. Also, power amplifier can be used in the uh, local area network uh, to amplify the signal before. Uh, distribute towards the different receivers. This is the general applications of the optical amplifier. Then what is the operation of the optical amplifier? Operation, actually here uh, optical amplifiers are classified into three types. One is semiconductor optical amplifier, RBM doped fiber amplifier and uh, Raman amplifier. So the Whatever the uh, semiconductor optical amplifier, uh, it is the main gain medium is semiconductor. But RBM, uh, some rare earth elements like RBM uh, material uh, is doped into the silica fiber so that it will make the RBM doped fiber. And Raman amplifier, the whatever the optical fiber that itself acts as the amplification part amplifier part just by uh, the effect common scattering effect amplification is done. So there are three types of optical amplifiers. So what is a general application? General application here we can see optical input signal. Uh, here one more thing in the optical amplifier uh, the amplification of the optical signal is uh, uh, is done in the optical domain itself. There is no need of conversion from the optical signal into the electrical signal, then electrical to optical signal. So here, main concept like in the optical domain itself, amplification is uh, progressing so that, uh, like if you compare with the reg regenerator, regenerator actually optical signal. If you use the regenerator in the optical fiber transmission medium, uh, regenerator requires the conversion from the optical signal to electrical signal, then electrical to optical is required. But here, 
optical domain itself amplification is done. So here we can see optical input signal will be given to the active medium. Active medium here in the semiconductor optical amplifier it may be a semiconductor indium, gallium, arsenide, phosphor such semiconductor ions are used in the active medium. In the RBM doped fiber amplifier silica with the RBM ions are used as an active medium. So in this one, this is the uh, general uh, operation of the semiconductor optical amplifier uh, uh, and uh, the RBM doped amplifier even in the uh, Raman amplifier. So active medium, it consists of something uh, material. Here two types of signals are required. One is the input optical signal itself. Another signal used to increase the energy level of the electrons present in the active medium. So that uh, source is called as a pump source. So pump source uh, will be uh, something, the energy of the pump source should be greater than the energy of the input optical signal. So uh, this input or pump signal will give the energy to the electrons present in the active medium so that those electrons will absorb the energy from the pump source and it will uh, transmit from the lower energy level into higher energy level. So what is the thing here is uh, electrons will be excited to the higher energy level so that uh, the input optical signal will incident onto the active medium that will triggers the excited electrons in the higher energy level so that that electron will drop back into the low energy level. So what will happen when the electrons will transit from the higher energy level to the lower energy level by the uh, external uh, triggering by the photon it generates the another photon generates the another photon so that uh, there is a amplification takes place actually here the population inversion is very important population inversion uh, so that here number of electrons in the higher energy level should be more so that will be generated by the pump external injection external injection carrier or pump source will uh, increase the number of electrons in the excited state or in the higher energy level so that incident photon just it will trigger the whatever the excited electron in the higher energy level so that all uh, those electrons fall into the uh, lower energy state so that it generates the more photons. So single photon can generate many photons so that that itself is the amplification. So this we have studied in the previous class. How input signal and pump source are used to along with the active medium used to amplify the input optical signal. So in the semiconductor optical amplifier, semiconductor optical amplifier here we use the semiconductor as the gain medium which is designed to be used in general applications to increase optical launch power to compensate for the loss of other optical devices. So semiconductor optical amplifier often adopted in telecommunication system in the form of fiber pigtail components operating at signal wavelength between 0.85 micrometer and 1.6 micrometer. So it gains that generates the gain up to 30 dB. So semiconductor optical amplifier available in 1310 nanometer, 1400 nanometer, 1500 nanometer and 1600 nanometer wavelengths. So it can be used with single mode or polarization maintaining fiber. So there are two types of semiconductor optical amplifiers, fabric perot amplifier and one more is non-resonant traveling wave amplifiers. So fabric perot amplifier here light enters FPA, it gets amplified as it reflects back and forth between the mirrors 
until emitted at a higher intensity. It is sensitive to the temperature and input optical frequency. But what is non-resonant? It is same as fabriperot amplifier except that end facets are either anti-reflection coated or cleaved at an angle so that internal reflection does not take place and the input signal get amplified only once during the single part of the device. They widely used because they have a large optical bandwidth and low polarization sensitivity. So, semiconductor of optical amplifiers, there are two types. One is Fabri-Perot amplifier and another one is traveling unity amplifier. Fabri-Perot amplifier is similar to the, uh, the cavity what we have studied in the laser diode. So, between two facets, optical signal will move back and forth so that optical signal will gain the energy and uh, it, uh, it, there is a gain or uh, because of the optical feedback, optical amplification takes place. That is similar to laser diode, but generally semiconductor optical amplifiers used as a traveling wave amplifier. Here, there is no back and forth movement of the optical signal. There is no optical feedback takes place between the two ends of the cavity. So, it is like only the signal, optical signal travels only once. At that time, it gains the energy and amplification process is done here. So, that is the traveling wave optical amplifier that we will be studying in this chapter. So, working principle, already I have explained the basic working pr principle same as the semiconductor laser but without feedback, it amplifies incident light through stimulated emission. When the light traveling through the active region, it causes this electron to lose energy in the form of photons and get back to the ground state. Those stimulated photons have the same wavelength as the optical signal, thus amplifying the optical signal. So here it's similar to laser diode, but the emission is triggered by input optical signal. Work in any wavelength, have high integration, compact and low power consumption, but gain fluctuation with the signal bit rate takes place in the semiconductor optical amplifier. And there is a crosstalk between different wavelengths. So it, it is it is under the traveling wave amplifier. First one that also that will be there in the <coughs> laser ch chapter also. So rho of n of t divided by rho t that is a population inversion number of electrons in the ion energy state related to the uh, rp of t what is the uh, pumping external pumping rate minus stimulated emission minus spontaneous emission spontaneous emission. So that tells the number of electrons in the high energy state. Optical. So here next we need to calculate what is the gain of the semiconductor optical amplifier. Gain is the factor by which the input signal is amplified and measured as the ratio of output power to the input power. So higher gain results in higher output optical signal. So in first one that also that will be there in the <coughs> laser ch chapter also. So rho of n of t divided by rho t that is a population inversion number of electrons in ion energy state related to the uh, rp of t what is the uh, pumping external pumping rate minus stimulated emission minus spontaneous emission spontaneous emission so that tells the number of electrons in the high energy state
So G is increasing with the device length. It is directly proportional to length. So gain is increasing with the device length. However, the internal gain is limited by gain saturation. So here G is dependent on the optical input intensity as it increases EH field depleted from the accurator. For sufficiently large optical input, there will not be enough EH to be stimulated. So here, the gain is increasing with the device length, but however, internal gain is limited by the gain saturation. And also, it depends on the optical input intensity. So, for sufficiently large, if you increase the optical, optical input further, there is no changes in the optical, there is no changes in the optical uh, gain, gain in the semiconductor amplifier. So, G of Z is equal to G naught divided by 1 plus P S of Z divided by P F sat. G naught is this unsaturated medium gain per unit length. In the absence of the signal input, P S is the internal signal power at point Z and P, -M P amp saturation is the amplified saturation power defined as internal power level at which gain per unit length has been halved. So the increase in the light power in incremental length of gauges can be increased as defined as dP is equal to G of Z, P S of Z, D Z. P S of Z means it is the power, internal signal power at the point Z. So increase in the light power, whether it increases the overall gain. So it is used by the equation like this. So finally G is equal to 1 plus P saturation amplifier divided by PS of E plan G0 divided by G where G0 is equal to exponential G0 L is the single pass gain in the absence of light. So here we can see in the gain the solid state amplifier gain versus power here if we increase the input signal power there is a decrease in the gain. Initially there is a high gain. You can observe from the diagram using the amplifier. Amplification must be done at appropriate places where the optical power is really low. So you can observe here input signal is low starting at that time gain is more. Gain is more almost 30 dB. Then at saturation point it decreases 3 dB down from the uh, maximum gain G0, then in the saturation region it will decrease, uh, it increase the input power. This is the solid state amplifier gain versus power. It gain increases with the increase in the length of the length and also gain decreases if we increase the signal power further more. So, in the low signal power, gain is more and as the length increases, as the optical signal travel within further inside the active medium, as length increases, gain also more. This is the case in the solid state, the solid uh, uh, semiconductor optical amplifier. In the RBM doped fiber amplifier, next type of optical amplifier, here, active medium is created by lightly doping silica fiber core by rare earth element like erbium, ethereum. Few rare earth elements are doped in the silica fiber, silica fiber core. So, long fiber length, it means the long fiber length of 10 to 30 meter. So, that optical signal, that optical fiber will be doped with the rare earth element so that the length that amplifier section is 10 to 30 meter long that is active medium so here it is uh, compared to the semiconductor optical amplifier it is transparent to signal format 
any bit rate and there is no cross type. But it works only in specific wavelength from 1530 to 1560 nanometer range. So, this is the RPM energy level diagram and amplification mechanism in RBM doped fiber amplifier. So, it is based on population inversion. Here, it is based on the population inversion, stimulated emission, but the active medium is different. In the semiconductor optical amplifier, active medium is indium gallium arsenide phosphor like semiconductor material. But in the RBM doped fiber amplifier, silica fiber with RBM element that makes the active medium. So, what will happen here? It is defined in terms of energy level diagram, it is defined in terms of three energy levels three energy bands, pump band, metastable band and the ground state band. So, in the energy level is defined in the three levels. But pump band, the, uh, we are not con concentrating on the pump band because it is not a stable band. So, only the stimulated emission we will be talking between the metastable band and ground state band. So, in the pump band, if in if like a pump signal will give the energy to the electrons present in the active medium, so that electrons will exit into the higher energy band to the pump band. Uh, by you can see the transition uh, diagram with the number one means after absorbing the energy from the pump source, electrons jump into the from the ground state band to the pump band. But it is not a uh, stable state. So, after some time it will, just it will transit from the pump band to the meta, meta stable band takes place. That is time by 2. It is a fast non-radiative decay. It, it will not generate any photons. Just non-radiative decay, it will jump into the meta stable band. Next, the pump transition, what will happen? It is defined in the meta stable and ground state band. The pump energy it is in the form of 980 nanometer or 1400 nanometer photons. But input energy, input uh, optical signal with a wavelength 1553 nanometer. So it is defined or it is explained in the two pump wavelengths. Huh? One is 980 nanometer, another one is 1400 nanometer. So what will happen here? Uh, whatever the pump energy, pump signal with the wavelength 1400 nanometer, just it will make the transition from the ground state band into metastable band. So here, uh, photons, uh, electrons will absorb the energy from the pump source and it will make the transition from the ground state band into metastable band takes place. Sir. That is, uh, we can see from in the number 3. 3. After that, within the metastable band, there is a transition possible stand. There is a possibility of transition from the top level to the bottom level. No? That is, uh, you can see in the 4. Okay, DK to the lower state. No? Later, what will happen? There is a whatever the excited electrons, few electrons may fall into the ground state band by spontaneous emission. Without any external triggering uh, photon, just excited electron will drop into the lower energy state and it generates the photon. It is similar to the, not similar, it is in the, it generates in the random, random pattern. But what we want for the RBM dot of fiber amplifier is stimulated emission. So, electrons in the higher energy metastable band should drop into the lower energy state band only by triggering by the external photon. So, external photon means internal optical power with a wavelength 1550 nanometer which incident onto the active medium. What will happen? That excited electrons will drop into the lower energy state by stimulated emission.
So it stimulated after the simulation stimulated emission, it generates the photon. That photon is similar to the incident photon with the same wavelength, same energy, same polarization, same frequency. So that is very important. So whatever the uh, so that the amplification is done in the atom doped fiber amplifier. So it is defined. It is very important uh, uh, diagram and very important question asked in the previous old question papers. Explain the atom doped fiber amplifier with the different energy level diagram. So here you need to draw this diagram with the uh, pump band, metastable band, and ground state band. And you need to represent along with the number what is the what are the different transitions, uh, different steps or different uh, uh, transition steps in the energy diagram. So the stimulated emission for the stimulated emission, uh, pump energy should be absorbed properly so that that will jump into the metastable band. Then the input by incidenting the input optical power that excites the that will trigger the excited electrons and it will fall into the lower energy state band. So there is the stimulated emission. What are the different configurations in the EDFA? EDFA, there are uh, co-directional pumping, counter-directional pumping and dual pumping. You can observe in this diagram, it can be like a uh, it can be EDFA can be used as a co-directional pumping like pump source is, is given or which is connected in co-directional along with the input to optical signal. So you can observe here signal input given to the tap coupler. So it will couple the input signal and later it will be given to the optical isolator. So it will avoid the reflection towards the sending part. Later, that input signal is combined along with the pump signal generated from the pump laser by using wavelength selective coupler, WSC. So both input signal as well as pump signal in the same direction. So that's why it is called as a co-directional pumping. So later it will be given to the EDFA. Then uh, it will be given to the OI uh, optical isolator. Then later it will be given to the tap coupler. So here in the co-directional pumping, the advantage is like uh, uh, there is a like a co-directional. The gain is around 17 dB and uh, 35 dB. 35 dB. So here co-directional pumping. Uh, it will be injecting uh, like it will be increasing the, the gain in the co-direction pumping. Also counter-directional pumping also possible. No? Second diagram you can see pump laser pump laser giving the signal in uh, opposite direction to the input power. So it is op opposite direction to the signal flow that's why it is called it as a co-directional pumping. Uh, Counter-directional pumping allows higher gain, but co-directional pumping gives better noise performance. That's why uh, for to handle the noise, uh, because of the, the better noise performance, counter-directional pumping also used. But first co-directional, it allows higher gains. And also one more case, in addition, pumping can be dual pumping also possible. So, pumping at 980 nanometer and uh, another one is pumping at 1480 nanometer. So, that is called it as a dual pumping. Dual pumping means it allows uh, both uh, single, single pump source or dual pump source. So, dual pump source means one is in uh, pumping at uh, uh, it pro produces uh, less noise in the uh, whatever the one is co-directional pumping another one is counter-directional but two pump sources are used that's why it is called as a dual pumping 
so that here gain is around uh, 17 dB or uh, dual pumping it is increases to 35 dB. So these are the three EDFA RBM dot fiber amplifier configurations. So here the EDFA power conversion and gain is given by the equation input and output power of the EDFA is expressed in this one. PS out is equal to lesser than or equal to PS in plus lambda P by lambda S P P M. So maximum output signal power depends on wavelength ratio of the pump to the signal. Pumping works only when lambda P less than lambda S. So wavelength of the pump signal should be less than the wavelength of the input power. And also one more thing power of the pump should be more. It is, should be very large compared to the optical input power. So pump energy, why the power energy of the pump signal should be more? Because it should give the energy to the electrons so that electrons should excite to the higher energy state. So power, power of the pump signal should be higher than the signal input signal power but wavelength always of the pump signal is less than the input signal. So the power conversion efficiency is defined in the PCE it is always less than the power conversion. It is equal to 1 when all pump photons are converted to signal photons. What is the meaning? Power conversion efficiency. How many? What is the uh, pump? Whether the pump photons, all photons are converted into signal photons. So, so always which is less than negative. Not all power photons are converted into uh, signal photon. It also read the amplifier gain is PS out by PS in less than or equal to 1 plus lambda P by lambda S P P by PS in. When input signal power is very large, then the maximum G is VT. In order to achieve a specific maximum gain G, the input signal power cannot exceed a value given by PS in less than or equal to lambda P by lambda S. P P will divide by G minus 1. So this is the input signal should be, this is the level of the input signal power to get the gain, maximum gain. So it should, it should not be more signal input power, input signal power should not be exceed the this equation P S in because once it increases beyond this value, the gain will not reach the maximum value. So to get the maximum value of the gain, PS input signal power should be less than or equal to uh, wavelength of the pump divided by wavelength of the signal PP in pump power divided by G minus 1 gain. So the maximum gain in a 3 level laser medium of length L can also be given as the uh, G maximum is equal to exponential N sigma E L. N is the rare earth element concentration. Sigma is the signal emission cross section. Therefore, maximum gain or power will be defined in terms of this equation. So, what is the gain versus EDFA length? So, there is an optimum length that gives the highest gain. So, along with the amplifier length, gain it changes. So, as the length increases, Gain also. Negative gain is too long. If the amplifier length is too long, it gives the negative length. So if the length is, amplifier length is less, it gives a more gain. You can observe here. If it is a amplifier, it is a far, it is a, if too long, then it gives the negative length. So this is the gain versus length. So gain versus pump level, you can observe. Gain decreases at large signal level. As you increase the signal level, signal level gain also decreases. Large signal level gain decreases with a different pump signal. Signal dependent gain and this increases with the pump power. If you increase the pump power, 
So initially, eleven point five milliwatt. The gain is less. If increase twenty four point five milliwatt, gain is more. Thirty nine milli, it is more, still more. If it is a fifty three point five milliwatt, the pump. If we increase the pump power, it increases the gain also. But gain decreases with the large signal level. If we increase the signal power, input signal power, it decreases the gain. But gain increases with the pump power. This is the gain versus pump level. So the next amplifier type is Raman amplifier. So so far we have studied two amplifiers: semiconductor optical amplifier and RBM doped fiber amplifier. So here next Raman amplifier, the optical fiber itself acts as a gain medium. So it based on the it's a optical amplifier based on Raman gain, which results from the effect of stimulated Raman scattering, which occurs in fibers at high optical powers. See this topic. Uh, this topic we have covered in the second chapter. What are the different scattering losses in optical fiber? One type of scattering loss, non-linear scattering loss, is Raman stimulated Raman scattering. So what do you mean by non-linear? After the scattering, the frequency is totally different from the input signal frequency. So here, actually, what is the SRS effect? Simulated Raman scattering effect is due to an interaction between an optical energy field and the vibrational modes of the lattice structure in a material. So, so it makes use of the standard transmission fiber itself as the amplification medium. So, there is an interaction between the optical energy field and the vibration modes of the lattice structure in a material. Actually, here. Uh, it always this occurs in the fiber at the high optical power. So what will happen here? Uh, whenever the input optical signal or photon interacts with the uh, optical medium or in the fiber itself, that input optical signal uh, it will scattered. After the scattering, there is a changes in the signal power. So that difference it will which will result in the vibration mode of the lattice structure in the material. So there is an interaction between the optical energy field and the vibrational mode of the lattice structure in the material. That results in the amplification. So it is uh, it is based on the stimulated Raman scattering. So here it does not require any extra amplifier medium like in the semiconductor optical amplifier and RBM doped. Here the tra standard transmission fiber itself acts as amplifier. Amplifier. First one that also that will be there in the <coughs> laser ch chapter also. So rho of n of t divided by rho t. That is a population inversion number of electrons in the ion energy state related to the uh, RP of T. What is the pumping external pumping rate minus stimulated emission minus spontaneous emission. Spontaneous emission. So that tells the number of electrons in the high energy state.
ಕಡೆ ಆಗಬೇಕು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಪವರ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ದ ಫೈಪ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ದ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ನ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಗೇನ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಪವರ್ ಸೊ ಸ್ಟಿಮ್ಯುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಪವರ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ಎ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಫೈಬರ್ ಲಿಂಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಮನ್ ಗೇನ್ ಆನ್ ಆಫ್ ರಮನ್ ಗೇನ್ ವೆನ್ ದ ವಿಚ್ ವೆನ್ ಪವರ್ ಪಂಪ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಟರ್ನ್ ಆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಗೇನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಒಪ್ಟೇನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಆನ್ ಆಫ್ ಗೇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಡೇ ಬಿ ಸೊ ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಪವರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ we can see in the gain solid state amplifier gain versus power here if we increase the input signal power there is a decrease in the gain initially there is a high gain you can observe from the diagram using the amplifier amplification must be done at appropriate these are the features of the raman amplifier already we have discussed and also write the amplifier gain is ps out by ps in that can be equal to 1 plus lambda p by lambda s p p by p c when input signal power is very really large then the maximum g is vt in order to achieve a specific maximum gain g the input signal power cannot exceed a value given by ps in less than or equal to lambda p by lambda s p p in divided by g minus 1 so this is the input signal should be this is the level of the input signal power uh, to get the gain maximum gain so it should it should not be more signal input power input signal power should not be exceed the this equation psc because once it increases beyond this value the gain will not reach the maximum value so to get the maximum value of the gain ps input signal power should be less than or equal to uh, wavelength of the pump divided by wavelength of the signal pp in pump power divided by g minus 1 gain 